your first and last name and then state your position here at St. Luke's. I'm Donald Linder and I'm one of the emergency room doctors here at St. Luke's. Okay. My first question is, um, today is Tuesday, December 8th. Have you seen many weather-related injuries, illnesses today? Oh yes. All morning we saw weather-related injuries. We've seen car accidents. We've had three or four of those today. Minor injuries, but we, and we've also seen people with uh, r snowblower injuries. We had one of our, my very first patients today, unfortunately, was declogging his snowblower and had a hand injury that required him to go to the operating room on. Okay. So, I mean, clearly um, that's one, one thing that folks should be aware of is, is you know, if they're out shoveling or, or using their snowblowers to definitely take care. Yes, and we, we, we encourage people just to review the basics of using their equipment, whether it's in the spring if it's a lawnmower, or now that it's the winter, it's the first snowfall, people are getting out their snow, uh, snow blowers. We want to make sure that they know exactly how to operate that and that they've started it up, they've done their maintenance on it, because invariably what people try to do is unclog and we unclog the snow and we see it unfortunately every winter people unclog the the intake and they suffer injury from it you would think that it would be intuitive not to do, stick your hand in a uh, you know a lawnmower blade or into a snow blower and oftentimes when we think that one of the the mechanical structures inside it is stopped there may be another one that's moving and that's the one that will get you so they just really need to be very careful with the operating any of the snow machines. And then also really use a defensive tactic when you're out driving. It's, you know, we have snowy, icy conditions that we're not used to. It's the first snowfall. And actually it's the time of year when people are in a hurry. I mean, they're doing the Christmas shopping, they want to get done, but they have to be just very, very careful. Oftentimes we hear too, if folks are out shoveling, that often heart attacks maybe take place because of, of the exerting yourself, somebody who maybe doesn't exercise that much. I mean, exactly. That That's when, when people are out exerting, them, exerting themselves, they can put themselves through a stress test. And in fact, when people come to the emergency department or even their family doctor's office, and when their complaints are not clear cut, then in those complaints maybe of some fatigue that they've had over the preceding few weeks or even chest pain or tightness or any type of discomfort, if the diagnostic workup in the emergency room isn't showing obvious changes on the EKG or in the blood work, we certainly know that the people are still at risk for heart disease, so we'll put them through a stress test where they walk on a treadmill. And that stress can induce what we call ischemia or changes or lack of oxygen to the heart. Now people can do that on their own. They don't need a treadmill to do that. They can be shoveling, they can be walking fast, trying to go from one building to the next or walking from their car into the store and they can get chest pain from that. And in fact, we've seen just in fact today, somebody who's had a heart attack as a result of that. Tell me um, as far as um, hypothermia, uh, obviously that is a concern, hypothermia and frostbite. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when, cause we're supposed to get some really really frigid temperatures Wednesday mm -hmm. and Thursday. Let's talk about signs, symptoms yeah. for both. One of the things that I would encourage people to realize is that it doesn't have to be below zero or freezing temperatures to get a cold-related illness. Frostbite is freezing of the fingertips or even the, the, the toes or the feet. Also, your exposed area, the nose, the ear lobes, those are areas that we see get um, frozen. Now, I would recommend that people dress in layers to help move some of the moisture away from the skin and into the clothes, and dressing in layers, and actually fairly loose-fitting layers, uh, it helps with dissipating the moisture. So people need to, again, it's just, it comes down to a lot of common sense that people need to be ready for the cold. It may look really nice outside, or it may look fairly calm outside, but you go outside just to check the mail, or walk down the street and that wind can get to you, so the wind chill also is a factor. What are some of the, the warning signs, the signs and symptoms of, of hypothermia and frostbite both? Hypothermia uh, is, the, is a cold-related illness, and people can get pain, and that pain can be in their exposed areas, whether that's the face or the extremities, and first, the people will get a, uh, they'll feel a numb or a cold sensation. And, then, and, and oftentimes people get that. But when it starts to get numb, 
that the areas that have been exposed are very painful, that can be signs that the skin is actually freezing. And whenever you feel any of these symptoms, you need to get inside and warm up. And we, what we tell people is to do active rewarming, and that is warm blankets or warm water. We don't want them to use very hot water or scalding water because their sensation is impaired in their hands and, and, or in their feet. And if you put your hands or your feet into very hot water or scalding water, you may not feel it right away until the skin begins to thaw. And then when you, by the time you feel that, you could actually be burning the skin. Anything else that you can think of um, weather related that, that folks out there should know about here as we're going into this nasty weather? Just be prepared. You know, you think about others around you, especially when you're driving a car, keep a safe distance. Don't be in a hurry. And, and when we, we've heard time and time again from the media and from law enforcement, if you don't have to be out in this weather, don't go out in it. Things happen, whether people slip or fall or get hit, you know, rear-ended by someone else. You know, these are all accidents. And then if you don't put yourself in that position, then it's not going to happen to you. Very good. Anything else? No. Thank you, Thanks so much. Appreciate it.